Hey everybody, welcome back to LED Live, where we are going to expose some darkness with the light of Christ. And we are very excited about our guests here today, Randy and Julia. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, thanks for letting us come. So, way, have you guys ever experienced any interaction with the New Age? Not that I know of. Not that I can think of. <laughs> I think you'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree with Randy. I think more people than not have come into contact with New Age philosophies, New Age ideas. So we want to get to the bottom of this. What is it? And we want to know your guys' experience. So stick around. Stay tuned. LED Live. We're going to talk about the New Age. Find out on this episode of LED Live. So thank you guys for coming on the show, and uh, we actually have discussed kind of the new age in different little LEDs from time to time. Um, comes up obviously in a lot in in the Hollywood subject, right. and so um, you know you guys have had some experience in this area. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, you know how did you guys even get involved in the whole new age movement? Well, actually, it's kind of interesting how it happens because you really don't know that it's happening because it kind of you you fall into it gradually. Um, I grew up in a Lutheran family. Um, my mother and father were very much involved with the church in the beginning and so forth. So it was something that you you know you do on an everyday basis. And then I love science fiction. Okay, I was a science fiction addict. Mm -hmm. And then um, you know I was reading all those wonderful things that you know in science fiction that you probably really shouldn't be doing anyways because it actually leads you systematically into the New Age movement. Then I really got involved with uh, that uh, series with, you know, Gandalf and the Lord of the Rings and all oh, that stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. And um, uh, that really, you know, was like a, a, a kicker for, for me to a great extent. And then what happened is, as, you, as we were progressing, I was getting older, actually, at that point. I, I, in fact, when I was at the University of Michigan, I was going to school there. You know, you have your Halloween routine. I, gr I dressed up as Gandalf. It was kind of scary. I looked almost like him. Right. You could have had the role. <laughs> yeah, I could have had the role. I'm serious. It was really wild. But anyways, um, uh, you know, we, uh, that's how, that shows you how it became pervasive already at that time. Right. And, uh, and uh, it was really a big thing when I was going. I had the book and everything, you know. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was everything there. You know, as I was kind of doing a little research for this and floating through YouTube videos and just listening to testimonies of, of other kids, mm -hmm. I was actually surprised how many young people had gotten involved in the New Age movement and how they all began literally exactly like you're explaining. Started reading books, started messing around with Harry Potter, started mm -hmm. messing around with anything that um, Hollywood was kind of putting out, and that was the introduction with, wow, this might be kind of interesting. And mm -hmm. then as they looked deeper into it, they fell into it. Well, the, here's the, that's where the next step comes, actually, because my mom and dad, they became very disenfranchised with the, the Lutheran Church. Um, some things happened within the church, and my dad said, I don't have anything to do with them anymore. And he became a Mason. <clears throat> Eventually, he became a 32nd degree Mason. Interesting. And what happened then is my mom started feeding me things, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, they have, um, my sister is still very much into it. She, that's where I started experiencing things like Joel Goldsmith, mm -hmm. Course of Miracles, mm -hmm. uh, Alice Bailey, Helena Blavatsky, mm -hmm. Nicholas Rarick. Uh, you know, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. from Which those, those names for anybody of our listeners that don't know are heavily involved in the New Age movement. Um, especially Alice A. Is it Alice A. Bailey that uh, Bailey, the, yes. the curriculum for the world mm, yes, schooling exactly. system no, is now exactly. beginning to be built that's off correct. of? That is correct. Mm. Uh, and you, that's where they had. They, I, I remember going to their office in New York City mm. uh, before they got transferred from. Um, it was over there on the east side, and then it moved from there to the United Nations building. And so they actually have in the United Nations building. You've got you know the, uh, the Theosophical Society which is the foundation for a lot of what is the educational system that we have today. Interesting. Uh, and, wow. um, uh, now it's still currently heavily active right now? From what my understanding is, I didn't go back to double check, but when I was there, you know, the, the Nicholas Rarick, a lot of the art from Nicholas Rarick, for example, you would find in the Theosophical Society and on, on, the, on, their, on their walls and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and how they all combined and can blend, you know, from the infinite way, but written by Joe Goldsmith. And then you have the books written by Alice Bailey and, and um, uh, 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 Helena Blavatsky. And that it was basically they were channeling someone. 
Okay, this is where the channeling starts to come in. And this for is sure. where, for example, the, the Course of Miracles was all, all channeled. Hmm. Uh, you have um, her books basically were channeled. Um, uh, Dwaj Kool, uh, it's an interesting name, isn't it, Dwaj Kool? Mm -hmm. But he was, the ch he was the entity that they were channeling. Hmm. And he had all this really mystical information. And Alice Bailey herself became a 32nd degree mason, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And uh, so you have all these different things that you put together. In fact, you, it, when you go to the museum, the, Nicola, uh, the, uh, the Theosophic School Society Museum and their books where they have all their books, you'll see a picture of her there in her, in her regalia mm -hmm. that she has on. And so it's really... Um, intellectually, it's stimulating because it gets your mind going down different ways. You know, it's really cool that you, you have all this wonderful, seemingly wonderful information. But really what it does is it focuses on your ability. Remember Shirley MacLaine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember her at one point remember walking down the beach and saying, I, I am not. God. You yep. know, she's I like, remember those remember tips that? distinctly. <laughs> okay. Yep. And, and, and um, that's where that all comes from. Yeah. There's a connection between all that stuff. is astounding. So at the core of New Age, it's all about I am God. That's mm. kind of the end goal of what they're getting at. Precisely. And so the attraction to that, somebody that is quote unquote spiritual or you know, looking to have a, a relationship with, a, with something greater than themselves, it sounds attractive. Well, it's often called the higher self. Right, right, yeah. which, which always- is kind of God. Right, boils in, back in down eyes, to the yeah. old self mm -hmm. always, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. In fact, that's where I was, what I, you know, when we were testing them, the mics out, I was reading to you from the Great Invocation. Hmm. Now, do you mind if I read that? Yeah, yeah, it's, go, it's, go. it's actually pretty short. Mm -hmm. It's not very mm -hmm. long. But this is something that you would actually sit down and you would meditate on this. Hmm. Okay, now listen to this. This is Now, this is a new age. This is, this is the, the core of, from, the, from the Theosophical Society. Okay. Okay, and this is, what, this is from the new age. This would be, you could actually say this is the mantra for the new age movement. Okay. Okay. Lord, protect my ears. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. This is from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on the earth. Now, that sounds really wonderful, doesn't right. it? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. From the, from the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to the earth. Mm. Okay, so you see all this blending right. coming in, okay? Right. If, you weren't, if you weren't studying, that sounds great. It's, not, it's really powerful stuff, mm -hmm. okay? And then we go into the next paragraph. It says, from the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters now and know and serve. The mm. masters know and serve. All of a sudden, now we've taken a left turn. Yeah. Mm. Okay? So you have this entrance that makes it really comfortable if you're a Christian, they'll go ahead and accept it. But now you have these masters. Oh, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the masters. masters aren't linked to, to Jesus and, and God? No. 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 Okay. See, their, their masters are now, uh, all of a sudden you've gone from Christ to having masters that teach you all about Christ. Mm. And these are ascended masters. Dwaj Kool was an ascended master. I mean, that's where you get like, you know, we've kind of looked into the whole Eastern influence through the martial arts and, and there's always this master element, someone mm -hmm. that has ascended to this, you know, higher learning and, and, and they're, they're now lording over other people. It's interesting. And then we have one, two, one last paragraph here pretty much. It says, from the center which, will, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Hmm. What plan? Right, right, right. <laughs> Whose plan? <laughs> that was a good point. Okay. You know? See, these are the questions you need to start asking. And now notice what it says here. This is the statement that they have at the end of this, the, the Great Invocation. It says, Many religions believe in a world teacher, a coming one, knowing him under such names as the Lord Maitreya. Okay, mm -hmm. you've heard that name probably, right? Maitreya, Imam Mahdi which is the Muslim aspect of it, okay? Uh, Kat, uh, is it, Kali, Kal, is it Kalki? Kalki? Avatar mm -hmm. and Bodhisattva. The terms are sometimes inversions of the great invocation for people of specific paths. Now, avatar as in like that's the word or just using the word as the dictionary describes like an avatar overtaking someone's body or they're looking for an avatar. They're looking for an avatar. That's kind of interesting. In light of like... Some of these clips we'll see later on. Okay, so this is absolutely fascinating that all of a sudden you have this, this terminology that's being used. We've heard of Avatar, which is in some sure. of the things that you'll be showing later on. And that all of a sudden you make all these connections, so you think that you're going something, that you have something really interesting. Well, the thing is, is that what attracts people to it, what attracted me to it initially, was because, you know, you have this secret. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, right. you have this secret something that mm-hmm. nobody yes, else has. That's what I. Right. That's what attracted me to it too. Yeah, I you was, feel kind of like mm-hmm. you're walking around like I know something that everyone else doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. So how did you how did you get involved in it? Obviously, we were we got involved with it very separately because I was almost 35 when we met, mm-hmm. and uh, I my involvement started when I was about 12. Hmm. Um, and I, I was in a church-going family, and around that age, I was starting to become really attracted to Christ. And I think that's when the devil made his move. Right. I, I don't remember the exact sequence of events, but I think probably the first thing was um, my oldest sister went away for a year abroad, and my brother and other sister discovered her Ouija board. And we started playing around with that. Oh boy! <laughs> and we we just thought it was the coolest thing. And did you did it do anything? Yeah, I mean, my my sister and I would put our hands on the thing, and, and you'd it feel just, like, it move. Yeah, it would just move around. And we're like, oh, this is so cool. Did it answer questions? Yeah. <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. that's scary. And then uh, at the same time, I was always a bookworm, so I feel like I didn't come into the new age through the medium of television and movies so much as through books, but. In those days, uh, this was the early 70s, the, those tabloids like um, the National Enquirer. Oh, yeah. Like nowadays, it's all just like celebrity gossip. Right, but right, in those right. days, it had a lot of, there were always articles about psychic stuff, uh, UFOs. There were advertisements for, you know, psychic books. And mm-hmm. so I would read that, and I was um, influenced by that. And then I also found a book by a psychic on... Uh, at the supermarket, waiting in line, hmm. <laughs> and uh, it introduced me to reincarnation. And I thought, wow, this is totally cool because I I didn't like mm-hmm. the I didn't like the hell thing. I mm-hmm. would I would think mm-hmm. about this and think, now, how is this? Well, I I just didn't see how is this. Uh, it just didn't seem right that God would send us to this eternally burning hell just based on this little lifetime on earth. Right. And, so then when I learned about reincarnation, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, this makes sense. This seemed fair. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you reap the karma that you sow in this life, in your right. next life. So, right. so once I, for me, that was all through my years of being in the new age, that was the one constant, really, was the belief in reincarnation. Because I, I went on, I'm, I, I didn't approach it as intellectually as you did. I was more into the experiential stuff, like martial arts and Mm -hmm, Buddhist mm -hmm. meditation, yoga. Mm -hmm. I lived in a yoga ashram for almost a couple years. Wow. So that was kind of my Did you ever get into the kundalini? Well, um, it Mm. was sort of. um, The heyday of the ashram had kind of already passed as far as kundalini, but um, apparently in the early days of that ashram, by the time I was there, there were like 300 residents. Wow. And in the early days, apparently people had a lot of these kundalini experiences. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, but I remember this one time where the guru was chanting and uh, we were all doing like a yoga pose and, and everybody just started like simultaneously like, like, like shouting or I, mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Like just like these deep yell coming up from the, interesting, <laughs> you know, and, interesting. and, uh, and it was very ecstatic too. And, and, uh, the other thing that how I got into it to begin with was that, uh, I visited the ashram just to take a yoga workshop for the weekend. And, and, uh, the guru was there and, and, um, they would have these evening meetings where everybody gathered and, and would sing these chants, like these really repetitive chants. And, and beat drums and mm-hmm, stuff mm-hmm. And, and dance. And, and uh, so it's like we danced and chanted ourselves into this frenzy. And then by the time the guru came in, it was, I don't know how to explain it. It was something like love at first sight. It just like, you know, it's like I was just immediately taken in by the guru. And, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know why that's kind of interesting? We, we just did an LED on a little kid's cartoon. Um, yeah, do you remember how the music and everybody was like all mm-hmm. like in awe over the main character? Mm-hmm. Um, Ugly Dolls, I don't know, just something uh-huh. that sparked me because uh-huh. uh, they had this real I- impactful scene where everybody was playing all this music and then in walked the main character uh-huh. and everybody was just like oh, in love with him. Mm. But it was really the music and everything mm. that was kind of driving uh, that. Interesting. interesting. So music has a very important part to and play. That's, that's why I've always been, since becoming a Christian, been somewhat uncomfortable with some of the worship you know right right involving we, music especially when there's drums and everybody goes into this kind of ecstatic almost like a 
Right, it reminds me too much of that. Right, because you're there, you recognize it, and you say, hey, 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 this is, this is from something else. Mm -hmm. You know, that was kind of like the thing that, that, that really woke me up with, with the yoga thing. It's like, you know, if you never really heard any testimonies or anybody that, that was Hindu or, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, hey, it just sounds like some, you know, natural poses and, mm -hmm. and you know, you're doing it. But when you, when you really sit down and listen to what the Hindus say, I mean, it's like, it's part of their practice. Mm -hmm. So it like is awkward to them when they watch it too, because they're like, hey, wait, this is just like my religion mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, I, I, I want to share with you guys a couple of clips here. I want to I I set this up by playing you a couple of clips from, from Oprah Winfrey. You guys have probably mm -hmm. seen these clips. She being uh, a person that is very high profile in, in Hollywood and is kind of pushing a new age mm -hmm. um, idea and philosophy. Um, you guys have probably seen this clip where she basically talks about there's many ways to, to get to God. Listen to mm. this. Uh, it talks about one of the points it brings out is one of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world, that there are millions of ways to be then a human being and, and many ways, no, but many paths many to what you call God. That and her path crazy. might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light. But her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her, if it brings her to the same point that it brings you, it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not. And I guess the danger that could be on that, I mean, it's, it sounds great on the onset, but if you really look at both sides, I there could possibly be just one way. What, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? And you say there isn't only one way. There is one way and only one way, and there that is through be. Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million you of people say in the world. There, there couldn't possibly be. Because you say, you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If no. you don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. <laughs> well, I have something that that brought up for me is that all through the years when I was in the New Age, it's like I was constantly getting into the this or that new fad. I'd go from Buddhism to a more Western New Ageism to something else. And, and it's like it, it was all perfectly in harmony with each other. And then, you know, we, we got married and about a year after we got married was when we first uh, came into the church. It was like suddenly this was the first time I was faced with a total paradigm shift. It, this did not fit in with <laughs> any of the other things that I paths that I'd been on. Um, hmm. it, it wasn't just this smooth transition from one right. path to another. It was right. definitely something completely like, wait, different. Oh, this doesn't fit here. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to come to Christ, or they they, they want to have this relationship with God. That's really what attracted me to the New Age. It's because you want to have this relationship. So it doesn't make any difference how you get there, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you get there. That's really what she's saying. But there is a process by which you get there. And that's a commitment to the understanding of who Christ is and what Scripture has to say. Amen. You see, the Lord is going to bring you from many different directions, mm -hmm. which is the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay? But what they're saying is, well, it doesn't make any difference how you get there as long as you get there. That's right. Okay? That's a big difference. Yep. Mm. But it, it raises a lot of questions like, where are we going? Mm. You know, are we all talking about the same place? Exactly. Because... The Muslims aren't necessarily talking about the same place as the Christians, aren't necessarily talking about the same place as the Buddhists. So, like, what place are we talking about? And when we get there, who's going to be there? Mm. You know? I mean, is it, is it all these cosmic Christ types? Mm. Or is it Jesus? Mm. Because if you say it's Jesus, then now, now it's a whole different thing, right? Like, now you're saying, I can get to heaven... And at the end, God is going to be there, but, but, but who is God? Mm -hmm. You know, you're raising a lot of really, you know, big questions. The book of Ephesians tells us there's one faith, one Lord, one baptism, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't tell us there's many. Mm -hmm. It says there's one. And Jesus also told us, he's like, you know, there's, there's a narrow way mm -hmm. and there's a broad way. Mm -hmm. It says few people find a narrow way. Mm -hmm. So it's not this catch-all, whatever you want to believe, Every place leads to the same place. The Bible's very clear that that's not the way it works. And I think if you put yourself in this position of, well, whatever, you know, they all lead to the same place. It doesn't matter what I believe. As long as I get to this, this place in the end, if you have a singular entity that you're dealing with, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. then you have to submit yourself to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't think a lot of people want to do that. I think they want to be more open. I think they want to be, I think they want to put themselves in a position where I can still do what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it, morality doesn't matter so much. There's not, there's not this set of rules or ideals or curriculum or whatever you want to call it that I have to submit myself to. I'm just going to, I'm going to hold back because I, I want to do my own thing. So if I can get where I want to go doing my own thing, that, that's the way I prefer. I don't want to submit to somebody. In the simple case of Hinduism, there's what, 300? Yeah, 300 million. Million gods. gods. It's yeah. not just like 300. It's like 300 million gods. And wow. it's like, can I have all of these gods? And, you know, that clashes with Exodus mm -hmm. 20, verse 2 and 3. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, have no other gods before you. And, um, you know, you can't reconcile those two together. So if, if, if the Bible's telling you, listen, you can't have any other gods, that's breaking God's holy Ten Commandments, yet you have all these other religions that say, no, no, that's okay. How do you rectify that? It doesn't. Yeah, the one thing from my, from my perspective, anyways, the real issue you were bringing up was really powerful and that, that struck home, and this is really the issue. It's one word. It's called sin. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is that you're in the New Age movement. You don't have to deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, when you come to Christ, you have to deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have, that requires submission. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the issue is. Whether we want to look at it any other way, we can look at it and call it different names or whatever you want to call it. But the bottom line is, is sin. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with that issue? Mm -hmm. And the only way you can deal with that issue is to, to, through submission to Christ and allowing Him to heal you and bring you that peace that you're longing for. And that's really what the New Age movement is looking for. They're looking for peace, right? You saw that mm -hmm. in the invocation. They're looking for love, right? Mm -hmm. All those things they're looking for, but what, they, what, the, what they're avoiding or not dealing with is your own heart and the dealing, uh, dealing with the issue of sin. Right. It's just knowledge will bring you to that, that exactly. higher place. It has nothing to do with actually that moral you know, choices. The compass. That's right. Which is a very Gnostic That's idea. Right. Exactly. That's right. Well, listen to what Galatians 2.16 says. Knowing that man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. The reason I threw this verse in here is because Oprah made a really good, interesting point at the very end. She said, what about the people that live in the middle of the Amazon that have never heard of Christ? Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So they're living up to the light that they can. That's That's... That's true. I really believe that there will be people in heaven that have never heard the name of Jesus. They're going to be coming up going, what? Jesus who? Who is this? But in our current situation, in our current world, and having majority of this country knows about God, mm -hmm. has at least heard about God. Mm -hmm. And so to say that you can choose and pick and have all this plethora on the table here, I think is, is, is very dangerous theology. Agreed. I think one of the things that turned me off Christianity was that Christians, a lot of Christians really aren't living up to the light that we have. And I, I wasn't attracted to that. I went to a pretty, we were going to a pretty liberal church where oh, we started looking. it was in a rich part mm. of the country and it was, you know, just a, a social club. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I didn't, I didn't see anything, and in my family, we didn't really, we didn't have family worship. We mm -hmm. didn't read the Bible together or pray together. Um, you know, obviously, you getting into reading and books um, and being an avid reader mm -hmm. weren't probably reading the Bible. So I did read my children's Bible growing up. So <laughs> there you go, there you go. But you need that line, mm -hmm. and you need that foundation. Because, exactly. you know, if you stumble across it, this stuff sounds great, you're going to fall into it. Mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting because yesterday I was, uh, the guy, one of the guys that I work with, uh, he says, where are you going tomorrow? I said, well, we're going to be talking to some people about a, a documentary that they're doing on the New Age movement. He says, no, wait, explain that to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, we're going through that explanation right now. But his issue was, he didn't really, what, what does it really mean to be a Christian? He was a Christian, and when I started talking to him about what it really meant to be a Christian, it was like, whoa, he was a Christian, but he was realizing, for example, tithing, okay? I can't tithe because I live from paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. My house is paid for, but I still live from paycheck to paycheck. Well, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. Christ will provide for you if you're willing to trust in him, have mm -hmm. faith in him. Mm -hmm. You see, that's really what the issue is here. You, you trust in the master's 
that we're going to go ahead and lead you into all truth, mm -hmm. okay? But are they really going to lead you into all truth? Mm -hmm. They're going to keep you, in, and that's really what happened with me in the New Age movement. I found myself going from one person to another person to another person and far, trying to understand exactly what is this meaning. And then you begin to realize that what you have, when you brought out the book Morals and Dogma a, a little bit earlier, you said it, it, has, it has the Bible mixed in with this language mm -hmm. that really is confusing. Mm -hmm. And that's really, if you really sit down and take a look at what is being said, you realize that it's not taking you anywhere. That's right. It's like circles. Yeah, it, it, it goes all over the place. It's really intellectually stimulating. Right. Okay. But really, what is the bottom line result? Right. Where is it going to take you? And are you going to have a true relationship with Christ in the process or with God, period? That's right. And that, it doesn't take you there. That's right. So when you said, you know, we have to build that foundation, it made me think of another scripture, which is in 1 Corinthians 3. It says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The Bible right. clearly tells us what our foundation is supposed to be. That's right. And John 4, 14, 6 says, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except mm -hmm. through me. And we know God cannot lie. Mm. So if he's saying this, you know what I mean? The foundation is God and Jesus, and he's the only way. So the statement that Oprah was making to me is, is a very dangerous statement. Well, does, do the, does the New Age movement claim that their foundation is Jesus Christ? They claim their foundation. Well, I'll give you an example. My father was a 32nd degree Mason, and one day he, he was trying to recruit me to become a Mason. This is after I'd become a Seventh-day Adventist. And um, he says, well, Randy, we, we accept all religions. Mm. I said, fantastic. And he said, we even have a Bible in the center of our lodge. I said, that's, even, that's great, Dad. And I asked him one question. He never, ever asked me again whether I would want to become a Mason or not. I asked him one question, and the question was this. Do you read it? Mm. Mm. That stopped it. He mm -hmm. never again asked me to become a Mason after mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. the issue in Masonry itself, even though it accepts all religions, mm -hmm. what is the core focus? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not the Bible because they don't read it. Right. His right. lack of submission of saying that, yeah, we do read it, right. tells me that they don't read it. Right. It's almost like the Christian cross that all the rappers are using. I mean, we were watching some, mm -hmm. some Christian rapper the other day and, and looking at one of his music videos. And I mean, I had to like turn away. And, and here he is, a self-professed Christian. And it's like, what does that cross mean to you? I mean, if it's just a symbol and you have it out there, it doesn't mean anything. If the Bible's on the table, but you don't read it, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As far as your question, I don't remember the New Age ever talking about Jesus as being the foundation, but they will talk about Jesus or the Christ, and, but he's just another enlightened being, maybe an ascended master. He's, uh, they believe he, I've read stories about, well, Jesus was reincarnated, you know, from, mm. <laughs> from this Tibetan master, or, or there's, an, there's an idea that Jesus went to Tibet to study with the yes, ascended the, masters. The ascended masters. And, <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. So for someone who may not be familiar with the New Age movement, is there a distinguishing factor? Because it kind of sounds like they're kind of, they're accepting of all. So they're bringing all this, all these different religions. They're probably taking from all these different ones. They talk about different aspects of, of different religions. But what is their end goal? What's their distinguishing mark? What are they trying to achieve? What they're trying to achieve, from my perspective anyways, Okay, when I, when I look at this, and if you have any thoughts, sweetie, I'd like to hear it as well, too, is that it's really actually taking you away from Christ. That's the ultimate goal. But okay? it's hidden. But it's hidden. Okay. Okay? In other words, it's just like the guy when I was talking to him yesterday, he says, well, tell me about the New Age movement. And I said, how can I explain that to you? Mm. Because it covers such a wide mm -hmm. expanse of area and territory. To go ahead and define it specifically is next to impossible. Mm. Because you're going to find the New Age movement in movies, Mm -hmm. You're going to find it in books. You're going to find it in science fiction. You're going to find it across the spectrum of life as a whole. Others have a tendency to target certain areas. Intellectually, for example, the Theosophical Society or Alice Bailey and her, and her material. That's the very intellectual end of it. But then you have those that are, you know, let's just walk along as far as Christianity is concerned. You have Christianity that's very New Age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have that commitment. When there is not that commitment in recognizing your need for Christ and submission to Him, you're walking into the, into the 
into and basically into blackness and the darkness mm -hmm. in the process. Because all of them are, are are selling you on the idea that that there's either an afterlife or there's an achievement that you can get to. Um, there's something greater than what you are experiencing now that you you know you want to get to a higher state. I mean, in Christianity, that would be obviously going to heaven. Um, there's something greater than the, what we're experiencing here, right? Mm -hmm. So the New Age movement is pushing people in that direction as well, but basically removing that Jesus is really the only way mm. and that you know there's all, all these different ways to achieve that. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Exactly. I don't think I had a clear goal of where I wanted to go as a New Ager. I just knew that I didn't want to cease to exist. Mm. I wanted to keep living. Mm. And that's why reincarnation was appealing. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, achieving higher states had its appeal. But the main thing was just I didn't, want, forever. To, I didn't want to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to live forever. <laughs> well, Acts 4.12 says, Nor is there, is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, which we must be saved. Mm. There's one. Yeah. There, there's another thing that I think that you find in the New Age is that one of the reasons that they don't like Christianity is because they feel like being judged. Mm. But, and that's one of the things that he was asking me yesterday as well, too. And I said, well, Matthew chapter 7 says, Judge not lest you be judged. By what judgment you meet out, so shall you be judged. Mm -hmm. Very clear. Mm -hmm. And so when I told that to him, it's like, whoa, wait a minute here. That's really what the core of Christianity is. We are not to judge anyone. Mm -hmm. We have no right to because we're a sinner just like anyone else's. Mm -hmm. And that's really what makes Christianity more attractive when you have that kind of a mindset. Mm -hmm. But what has happened with Christianity has become what? Mm -hmm. very judgmental mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a whole. I would agree. You know, and we, we have a tendency to look at people and we judge them for whatever their position is, what they don't have or what they do have or where they are in life or what color they are, whatever the situation might be. Mm -hmm. And instead of accepting them who they are, for example, there are people that hate Muslims. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute here. Mm -hmm. They are just as, they are no different. Mm -hmm. They have that right to Christ just as much as we do, mm -hmm. as an atheist does or anyone else does. If we have a religion that actually reveals that character of Christ, guess what happens? Mm -hmm. People will come flocking to it. Mm -hmm. Like they're looking at it in the New Age, they will come out of the New Age. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, I was on an airplane, and I was coming back from, I can't remember, I think it might have been coming back from Arizona. And I was sitting next to this guy, and we were talking back and forth, and, and he said, um, oh, well, I came out of the New Age. He says, what? <laughs> you came out of the New Age? You can't. I mean, he was in shock. Mm. He was in complete shock. How? <laughs> it was funny because it was, you know, the row with three yeah, seats, yeah. and he was in the corner, so it's like he had no way to escape. <laughs> Love it. And he was reading a New Age book. Uh, oh, wow. So <laughs> <laughs> and the poor guy put him into shock. You know, he, did, he was completely flabbergasted. How can anybody come out of the New Age movement? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and the reason that, I, that we basically came out of the New Age movement was we discovered a faith in Christ that was accepting. Mm -hmm. You know, does that mean that we don't have our problems? No, mm -hmm. that's not true at all. Mm -hmm. But the focal point and the true essence of who Christ is, is discovered that way. That's a good point. Good point. That's what a lot of people are searching for. Um, I want to kind of continue on here with a little bit of what, where Oprah's going with this because um, this is some of the, the mentality that is being pushed out into the world. And what's more alarming to me is you're beginning to start to see a blend of New Age philosophy and Christianity. Mm -hmm. And that little merger of the two of those together is, is, is something that, um, you know, I was pretty shocked um, um, coming across some videos on YouTube that how many people had fallen into this just searching around on YouTube. I mean, you look at you look at the uh, the the young kids that really get into the into this. It just began with just searching out like Christian themed things, mm. and it steered towards that. Um, you know, the suggestions of the other videos that came up and stuff like this. So I kind of want to give a little background. Um, here's a little clip from Oprah uh, where she's trying to describe this blend of Christianity. Well, I am a Christian who believes that there are there are certainly many more paths to God other than Christianity. I'm a free-thinking Christian who believes in my way, but I don't believe that it's the only way. What I believe is that Jesus came to show us Christ consciousness. Okay. Ah, we know. Have, now, have you heard of this term, Christ consciousness? Mm. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yes. Yeah. oh, yes. What is this? 
You want to go? Well, I don't know, but this blending of Christianity and it's nothing new. I mean, that's been going on for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. When I was about 14, I became interested in the books of uh, Edgar Cayce, mm. who was a New Age prophet, and he really blended. Yeah, he uh, was a sleeping prophet. I don't know if you've ever heard yeah. of him before. Mm -mm. He was a sleeping prophet over in Virginia Beach. Mm. He has, they have their headquarters right there over on 55th Street or something like that. Mm. And um, beautiful place, you know, it overlooked the ocean. And he and lived in the time. He, did, he passed away around World War II, so he, and he yeah. was old, so that was his time. And period. he was a Christian. Mm. He considered himself to be a Christian. And he but, read the Bible. And he read the Bible. But he was called the sleeping prophet. Well, the sleeping prophet, what he would do is he would have, if a person had a problem, let's say, in California, he would go into a trance, and he would actually prescribe what the problems were with that person, and would, if they would follow the prescription that was given to him, which was, guess what, natural remedies. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It started with his own health problem, because he, he, he got uh, desperate and tr decided to try hypnosis, and hmm. that's how he started like, going into these trances. Interesting. And, and, and that's and you know, and when you t and they've got all these writings and he you know he talked about Atlantis and Mu and all uh, you know we're, we're all these different things about the past that affect us today and and absolutely fascinating, but yet those remedies that he came up with are still they actually still use them mm -hmm. they still work and, mm. and he would he would encourage people to continue going to church mm. and meanwhile they were reading all this metaphysical stuff yeah which to me is fascinating it's like you know the devil is just so slippery mm -hmm. it's like he kind of gets in there and he tinkers with the with the mindset a little bit but he's like no no no, just keep going to church you know it's okay you, you, you'll be fine tweak, tweak yeah and he just shifts the mind a little bit so here's my question you know for the for the viewers the bible tells us that we should have the mind of christ exactly mm -hmm. what is the difference between that and christ consciousness as she says well, now we're going into esotericism because all of a sudden you have this huge mind of Christ where we come together, we unify this way, and then we all somehow mystically connect with one another. It's okay? kind of like enlightenment. Enlightenment, yeah. It's, it's like, you know, for us as a Christian, you have that peace with Christ, okay? You're, you're have, you have basically Christ in you, the hope of glory, mm -hmm. okay? That's the same kind of a concept, but now we're taking it in a different direction. Okay, we're taking it away from the focal point of Christ, and we're saying this Christ consciousness. You know, what, what does that mean? How do you define that? Yeah, we still mm -hmm. haven't answered that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so you see, you see what I'm talking about? The consciousness of the New Age is very focused on self, more, you know, the, yeah. more kind of you, what you like have going to do. within, going within higher and powers. And listening to Oprah's comment it reminded me of what you were saying before, Andy, about um, you're talking with a Christian, but you come to find out that they don't really know what Christianity is all about. Um, being a Christian is a follower of Christ, and mm -hmm. Oprah is saying that, you know, Jesus came to earth to show us his consciousness, but I still believe there's a whole bunch of other ways to Christ, as exactly. if that whole process was just a suggestion, like Jesus was saying, oh, well, this is one way, you know, you can do others, but this is... ignore that. Right. It's like <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll define it using Oprah's words. That Jesus actually taught me Christ consciousness is who to be fully human, Hello. is to be Christ-like. <laughs> yeah. And so it's not... A, a, any time that you uh, not follow your spiritual calling, that you are lesser of a human. Yes, I'm Christian too, and I got that a long time ago. Uh, I was, mentioned this also in this book uh, called um, Discover the Power Within You by Eric Butterworth, where he talks about the Christ consciousness. And up until then, I was like you, Margit. I thought Jesus came, died on the cross, that Jesus' being here was about his death and dying on the cross, when it really was about him coming to show us how to do it, how to be, yes. to show us the Christ consciousness that he had and that that consciousness abides with all of us. Yes. That's yes. what I got. Yes. What, what Christ consciousness to her is, is Christ was the model, he's the way, he realized he was divine and that we can now um, model ourselves after how he awoken himself to be divine, mm -hmm. we can awaken to be divine. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. So the consciousness mm -hmm. that Christ was like at 12 years old, oh wow, I'm God. 
like all of a sudden, you now have that opportunity to be able to do that. Sure, that's how she plan. describes it. Interesting. And then, yeah. why do you need Christ if you're God? Amen. <laughs> that's the that's the I end. Mean, yeah, that's that's the end goal. So she has a uh, a show called Super Soul Sunday. You ever heard of the show? No. no. Yeah, you ever heard of the show? Yeah. Very interesting. She takes on all these people onto her show. And she just has this sit-down conversation with him, and it's usually about spiritual or Christianity or That's God cool. or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So here's a little compilation of, of she's asking them all the question, what does God mean to you? Listen how they answer oh, Sorry, it. when you say them, are these of different faiths? Different people. Well, okay. these are people who, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what their actual faith background without watching the show, but okay. this, is, this is what she's trying to like really get to the bottom of who God is. What is your definition of God? God is the highest place within each and every one of us. It's our divine self. I define God as an energy, a spiritual energy. It has no denomination. It has no judgments. It has an energy that when we're connected to it, we know why we're here and what we're here to do. Well, he's my beloved. He is my most intimate beloved, my friend, the one I look to in everything. I wouldn't try to define him because no one knows God but God. He is beyond even our idea of the beyond. What is your definition of God? All that is. Everything. Everything. <sighs> Breath. Life. Everything. I, I can't even, just get Webster's Dictionary, throw it on the floor. <laughs> it's everything. 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 And God is in everything. God is everything. Not only in, is everything. Sounds oh. like they're running away from something, you know, from absolute truth. You can, you can hear the very beginnings of where this is starting to go, where the actual end goal of the New Age movement, like you guys have said, is really doing. It's, it's, it's a stepping away from Christ. Exactly. It's a stepping away of the focal point being on this being and being like, we can self-realize mm. and come to this understanding. Um, I, I, I brought that up because I want to play this little clip of this uh, YouTuber that to me is why we, why we decided to do this show in the first place. Um, I think this is a cautionary tale to parents who allow their children to play with YouTube, mm -hmm. literally. Because um, I know I've kind of said this a couple of times, uh, these kids are jumping on YouTube and it's suggesting videos to you. So she has quite a few followers and um, she kind of uh, got, she's a Christian, so she does little vlogs and stuff about Christianity. And the production company, to A Wrinkle in Time, reached out to her and, and asked her to do something for them. So I'll let her tell the story. So New Age religion has been all over the place lately. I've just seen it everywhere. I feel like everyone's talking about it. Everyone's starting to believe that way, especially here on YouTube. I know a lot of YouTubers who seem to be kind of getting into that way of thinking. And I've even had some subscribers who have been struggling with falling into that belief system as well. And then this past Sunday, I went and saw the movie A Wrinkle in Time by Disney. And all of this together has led to the video I'm making today. So about New Age, something I've noticed is that a lot of people who fall into the belief system of New Age religion used to be Christians. Oprah, for example, used to be Baptist and now she's like a huge advocate for New Age beliefs. There's two videos I'm going to leave linked below that are actually people who were Christian, went to New Age religion, and came back to Christianity. But about a year ago, actually, I got an email from the people associated with the movie A Wrinkle in Time and they were looking for a bunch of Christian influencers to promote the movie. Back then there wasn't really a whole lot of information about it. I just looked up the movie and from what I saw I thought that there was something about witchcraft in it and so I was kind of just like eh you know I didn't get a good feeling about it so I decided not to go through with that which I'm glad that I didn't even though there wasn't any witchcraft in the movie. But yeah they were specifically looking for Christian people to promote the movie which I thought was interesting. And then on my Facebook I actually saw a sponsored ad for like a devotional course to go through the movie and then see how it correlates to Christianity and like what you can learn from it and I was really confused about that as well. So all of that together along with all of the people that have fallen away from Christianity to this religion and the subscribers that have reached out to me about this has kind of led me to think that the new age religion is really an attack on Christianity and that Satan is really trying to use this to get people to fall away from faith in Jesus. So exactly like what you guys, you guys obviously haven't seen this clip. Nope. Exactly like what you're saying. She's coming to the same realization.
And, and here's something that's kind of interesting. So this is CBN News, and this is what the, the article says on their website. The writer of Disney's Wrinkle in Time ditches Bible th biblical themes for a lot of New Age content. Now, have you guys ever looked into this movie? No. No? Never. Never seen a trailer? I was always curious to read the book when I was a kid, but I never read it. Okay, so did you know that the writer was, was, was quote-unquote Christian? No, I didn't know that. The writer of Disney's Wrinkle in Time is defending her decision to move Christian themes away from the movie. She removed references to Jesus and various biblical passages from the film adaptation of, I can't say that, Madeline L. Engel's popular book of the same name. She says, for a message of inclusiveness. So they removed these, these things of Jesus, even though there's all this like magical and sorcery and things that are, that are in there that just, a lot of things that are, that, are, that are wrong with this movie in the first place. But I just thought it was really interesting that they were trying to put uh, like, like things of Jesus in there and they took it out. Mm. For a message yeah. of inclusiveness. For a message of inclusiveness. Yeah. But, but after, now going back to this young girl, Savannah, that was getting suggested in her feed. Mm. Like as she was like, wait a minute, like they reached out, they wanted Christian influencers to influence people to go and see this. And you see how, see how slippery mm -hmm. this is? And obviously Oprah is in this movie. She she's, was heavily involved in the making of this film. Let's talk about Avatar. Mm. You know, you brought that up earlier. Yeah. Avatar has a connection with, with, with the new age. And um, have you guys ever seen this movie? Bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. I've seen bits and pieces of it as well. And uh, very interesting. If you just look up what in the dictionary definition what an avatar is, in dictionary.com it means a descent of a deity down to earth. Mm. So I find it pretty interesting that that obviously is the title of the, this very major movie. And they're making a couple of sequels that are coming out. Um, and, but this is chock full of New Age theology. The New York Times, uh, there was a writer that wrote for the New York Times and he was talking a little bit about this whole uh, Avatar series and uh, listen to the language that he, that he puts in here. He says, it's fitting that James Cameron's Avatar arrives in theaters at Christmas time. Like the holiday season itself, the science fiction epic is a crass embodiment of a capitalistic excess wrapped around a deeply felt religious message. It's at once the blockbuster to end all blockbusters and the gospel according to James, not the Christian gospel. Instead, Avatar is Cameron's long apologia for pantheism, a faith that equates God with nature and calls humanity into religious communion with the natural world. Yep. Mm. I saw parts of the movie. So and without question. So huge into pantheism, right? Big All time. about the connection. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I always tell the people this when they, when they talk about Avatar and they want to know questions about Avatar. I find it very interesting that you have this beautiful planet that's the most beautiful planet ever created and it's got a tree in the center of the mm -hmm. planet yeah, exactly. and everything revolves around this tree. It's like once again. The tree of life. Yeah, yeah, once again you just hear this like upside down twisted version of the biblical account. Exactly. And, uh, you know, instead of... Instead of these demons possessing you, you possess the demons, mm. and that was kind of like what the movie was. So that coming out is very interesting. Now let's talk about Star Wars. Oh boy. Because <laughs> there's, how much new age do you see in the Star Wars series? All over the place. All over the place, right? Yep. Like, um, I found it very interesting. Uh, the Force. Yeah, the Force, that's probably the, the thing that the Star Wars is known for the most. And um, in this Star Wars series, you know, they've defined what the Force is, but they keep kind of giving you little bits of information. Um, and now it's like when George Lucas sold Star Wars to Disney, mm. um, there was always kind of a separation between the light and the dark. And now what Disney's done with it in the last few Star Wars that, that have come out is they've now started to blend them together. Hmm. So they're basically making the statement that each, each person that uses the force needs as much darkness as they do light. Mm -hmm. And you need them both to be like symbiotically in balance mm -hmm. together. Interesting. And it's like a yin yang kind of. It's a yin yang idea. and they're pushing everybody into that. So have you guys ever heard of um, of, um, oh, I need to click it here. The official plugged in vodcast. You ever heard of these guys? I've heard of plugged in. I've heard of plugged in. What mm -hmm. does plugged in do? Plugged in reviews movies. They review movies for specifically what demographic? 
I thought it was Christians. It is for Christians. Hmm. So you've got these two guys that literally go through, look at the movies, and try to find all the things that are, you know, cautionary with this particular film. And you can tell right away these guys in the very beginning of this clip, they're very into the Star Wars series. Okay, so I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag right now. They're very into it. But I even found it more ironic what they were actually saying that they saw in this movie. I'm Adam Holtz. I'm Paul Acey. And today we're going to talk about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Paul, you reviewed this movie for Plugged In, and I, of course, saw it the first night. I actually, <laughs> I made you go see it because I wasn't yeah. sure I wanted the responsibility and the burden of reviewing something that I hoped to love. And it turns right. out, I think you loved it more than I did, but that's not going to be the main thrust of our podcast. Yeah, no, podcast we, today. we have some very different ideas on, on how this movie worked yes. or not. Uh, but what we want to talk about here today is really whether it will work for you and your family. Yeah. And it does have some tricky elements, right? It does have some tricky elements. And, you know, I think the interesting thing is that after 40 years, we're still talking about the Force. And after 40 years, they keep... <laughs> introducing sort of tendrils of meaning to the force that sort of forces us, ha ha ha, 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 ha. to keep having this conversation. Right, right. Why don't you talk about some of the things that are sort of new wrinkles or things that are fleshed out with sure. regard to the force in this movie? Yeah, we all know. I mean, if we're familiar with the Star Wars universe at all, we understand that the force has always been a huge component of... It's everywhere. Yes. Yeah, it's, it it's, it's part of its mythos. It's this this energy that wraps around the entire universe. It's an energy field that binds... I won't quote <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi anymore. No, okay. <laughs> but but it is it is this this super powerful thing. He's describing it as this energy force that it permeates pantheism. into everything, pantheism. right? Okay. Mm. It's pantheism, mm -hmm. right? Because what did what did Oprah just say? It's everything. 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 And God is in everything. God is everything. Not only in, is everything. It's in everything. Mm -hmm. It's in the breath, it's in the life. Mm -hmm. And basically, you, you, you know where the Star Wars series goes. If you just focus your energy, you can then control those elements. Mm -hmm. So then who becomes the god of basically everything? You can bend it to your will is basically where they're going with this. You know, there's another point, is that you have ascended masters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, just like you had in the New Age movement, you have these ascended masters that direct you and, and, and teach you what it means to be a new ager, so to speak. Here in the Force, in the Star Wars movies, you have these ascended masters mm -hmm. of the dark side and of the light side. They even call them masters. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really kind of scary when you sit back and you start to think about that. That's how closely it is connected. That's right. That's right. I mean, that is just... Uh. That's mm -hmm. right. I see the next step as chaos if everyone's God and everyone's controlling yes, exactly. everything. Well, you, that's why you have you know, the Avengers and all these other people that are coming up. That, mm. You know, everybody has these superpowers, okay? Well, that's really what an Ascended Master has. He has superpowers. Mm. He has these abilities to do things, to heal, to do all these other really wonderful ma magical things. That's what an Ascended Master has the ability to do. You know, and when you see, when, 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 the, when the final conflict comes, you're going to see these kind of miracles taking place where Satan's angels will be doing these kind of things. So will God's people, but they'll recognize it's not them. Mm. It's a huge difference. It feels to me a lot like uh, Taoism. You know, they, yeah. they have this this philosophy in Taoism, which is a is an Eastern religion mm -hmm. um, system of thought uh, called and that's Wei. The, the yin yang exactly. Symbol with it has the, little the yin yang symbol. Paisley's chasing each other in a circle. So it really does reflect Taoism a lot, in, and we even see sort of a, a reflection of the yin yang symbol in the in, movie. In that pool, right? Right. We see we see a, not exactly, but there's there's this yin-yang type of thing in a pool there and, and in this movie I think that the thing that, that sort of ratchets the spirituality up in, mm -hmm. in this particular movie that we have not seen in the past is that it's overtly referred to as a religion and it's, mm -hmm. it's explicitly called by, by Luke Skywalker as a religion and we it's, see holy books we see sacred texts essentially we see that it has been this although it could just be Luke's journal for all we know <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we can't read it. It's in right. some weird language. It's in language. some weird language. So, but but it, essentially, they they are sort of specifying that it is religion, which it has always had those elements. But now it sort of takes the next step forward, mm -hmm. and that I think causes. I mean, it's it's something the parents need to be aware of, right? Yes. What they're recognizing is basically that they are, in a sense, 
referencing it as a religion. Mm. What's the problem with that? Where could this all be going? That's, that's, that's what I really want to get to the bottom of right now. Like, like you see all of this, this blending of, of religions, but yet a stepping away from Jesus. Where are we going with this? Why is this some of the most popular filmmaking that we have in our world right now? Well, based on what I understand, you know, what the Bible has to say, and what my experience has been in the New Age, is that it's actually, it's actually leading to a focal point. Okay, all these different things that are taking place. You, you have Maitreya, you have all the Buddhist Varda, which I was talking about, you know, the, the Avatar and all these other people that are coming in, that are all, but they're all pointing into one direction. Why? In other words, you have all these little points of darkness, I'm going to call them, instead of light, okay? Bringing people into a particular specific direction. What direction is that? Well, we know from Scripture that at one point, Satan has to appear as Christ. That's right. And what this is doing, this is setting people's minds up on a really intricate way to receive that deception of the last days. I mean, it's really powerful because all of a sudden he can say, ah, this is who I am. In other words, he is the Buddha reincarnated. He is the Christ. He is the Mahdi. He is this. He is that. All these things are all of a sudden interlinked. He is the one that is behind the force. He is the force. Okay? He can go ahead and come in and say, I am that person. I am the one that's connecting all these different things, which is what Oprah was talking about. And it makes perfect sense to me if they're pushing everybody in this, like, all-inclusive, everything else other than Jesus. Exactly. Set Jesus over here and move everybody over here for when that day comes that Satan will step on this planet as that cosmic Christ. Boom, everyone's yes. going to rush to him. And they're going to rush to him because all the, all the defenses have been dropped. It's like the reversal of, of what happened to the Tower of Babel. Right? <laughs> so they're there, they're unified. God says, man, if I, don't, if I don't do something here, there's like nothing they wouldn't be able to accomplish. Confounds all the languages. Now we're seeing like the same thing, but almost in reverse. You've got all these religions, not just languages, but religions, mm -hmm. and they're all leading back to like a single point where they could accomplish anything if they put their mind to it. Just like he said, it's, it's, but it's not leading to Jesus, right? It's leading it's, to something else. It's interesting you said that. My wife, like, she teaches English mm. to Chinese people and so forth. Mm. Notice how one language has become almost the international language. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, in order for people to communicate, you have to have one basic language. Mm -hmm. What did God do, as you said yeah. in Babylon? He confused the languages. Mm -hmm. So you have one language that unites them. You have one mind or one ability where everybody comes together, one focal point. Mm -hmm. I mean, this the, is really the, the other thing that's really struck me because we lived in China 20 years ago. But what's really struck me is now how how familiar they are with Hollywood movies right. mm -hmm. and you know American right. pop culture, and that wasn't the case when we were there. Right. This is their evangelism tool. Exactly. I mean, it literally is the way that they're spreading their message far and wide, and it's attractive. I mean, you, you walk into a store. When was the last time you went into Target and it was just smattered with Jesus stuff? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's happen. can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? But you see the marketing. I mean, what if every little kid was wearing a backpack with like Bible verses all, all, all smashed around it, right? Yeah. And they're going to school in little outfits that look like, you know, Peter and Paul and, you know, <laughs> wouldn't happen, right? <laughs> Listen. What, oh. would you, what would you say to the person who, who says, man, you guys are taking this way too seriously. I watch these movies as my escape, not necessarily that it's, it's I'm going to accept the religion or I'm going to have this as a part of my everyday life. You know, I think there's a lot of people that, that have that mindset, especially in the Christian community, that, uh, you know, this is not going to change my belief system, mm -hmm. right? But you have to still consider that, that it is familiarity that we learn. So that's how advertising is so, so powerful. It's like, it's like over and over and over again, you, you get exposed to these certain um, you know, uh, products or something, and it's through that familiarity that you are gonna be in the grocery store, and when you go to pick out that, that product off the table, your mind is subconsciously working to, to choose what you're gonna choose, because you've got a lot of different choices. Mm -hmm. So the danger that I see here is you are subconsciously planting opposite thoughts of what the Bible is trying to build up. 
The way is Jesus Christ. He's the only way. And our relationship should be with him. And if we're listening to all of these new age thoughts and everything, which are totally competing from that, I think enough of that over the course of time, there will be a moment that that decision will be need, needed to be made. And it's, it's going to be a confusing decision. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you when Satan steps on the scene, it's not going to be like, oh, I know who he is. You know what I mean? If you don't understand and are able to discern what the character of Jesus and Christ's mission and all that is, all of this stuff is just going to play into that confusion. And I think it's going to happen on a subconscious level. A lot of what Hollywood, Hollywood puts out, these guys are, it's a teaching tool to them. You know, it's not just, oh, let's have some fun. We're going to put a movie together. You know, y you can find multiple statements from multiple directors and producers where they're like, I didn't believe that, so I'm going to do it this way. You know, when it comes to a Bible movie or, or they're, the, you'll take a character that's a superhero, no religious affiliation, and then they'll tell you like, all this stuff that they put in about God and their thoughts about God. And it's like, wait a minute, like, where did all that come from? Mm -hmm. Because they want to teach you something. They're, they're really giving you their viewpoint. And if you're going to consume somebody else's viewpoint all day long, mm -hmm. instead of God's viewpoint, it's like, what are you going to wind up believing? And let's swing it back all the way to the beginning of the conversation. How did you guys get into the new age? How did you get there? It happened. You, but, but you read books and you read watch media. Uh -huh. and, and so, whereas a lot of people say, you know what, I'm strong, I'm going to do this. Hey, the mm -hmm. reality of the situation is most people probably aren't reading their Bible. Most people are surface skimming. They know the popular texts. Mm -hmm. But most people don't sit down and really spend time every day reading their Bible. And I think this is a, a danger competing with that. And in World War II, like Hitler, one of the things that he did to gain popular, you know, opinion was he started pumping stuff into the school system. And? You know, and it was rallying all the kids and they're like, yeah, this idea and that idea and they're all on board with Hitler. And it's like, well, duh. And he used media as one of his strongest yeah. ways to influence an entire nation that the Jews were nothing more than rats. Yeah. How did he do that? It was just literally influential media. Neural linguistic programming That's right yeah. okay we the enemy of souls has taken that to a new art mm -hmm. he's he's gone and broadened that whole understanding of what that really means because it's not only what you see that affects you mm -hmm. it's what you hear mm -hmm. daily mm -hmm. on a one-to-one -one basis that affects you mm -hmm. it's it's the we think that just going ahead and watching a movie it's okay mm -hmm. but you know what it starts to program your mind mm -hmm. all right those small little inserts that go in and and they touch your mind and they, and they bring you in that focus. And then you begin to realize, hey, this is a really scary situation. Mm -hmm. What you read affects how you look at life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All those different things start to make a difference. So when you, if you've been fed a lie and you think that it's the truth and you don't realize that you've been fed that lie for a long time, what happens? You buy right into it. Mm -hmm. So when the enemy of souls appears, where he says that, you know, he actually will almost like appear like he's walking on earth. Christ doesn't say, when the Bible teaches that he doesn't do that. Mm -hmm that we go up to meet him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't come down here. That's right. That's you right. know? And if you're not programmed or if you haven't studied your Bible, you're not going to realize that mm -hmm. and you'll be taken in by the deception mm -hmm. because there'll be such a magnificent presence, a powerful presence. Remember, my wife was talking about earlier about you know, there was this crescendo that developed and then all of a sudden the guru appeared, right? Mm -hmm. And what you're watching is this crescendo that the enemy of souls is orchestrating on a level that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And he will appear at the apex. Mm -hmm. And people will just go, oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's him. That's what we've been waiting for. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you think about that in the reverse side when, when, when Christ was being walked to, you know, crucifixion mm -hmm. and, and the frenzy that was going on there and the demons were running around, you know, crucify him, crucify mm -hmm. him in human form. I mean, that's, that's, he, he, he has the ability to get the crowd going. Everybody jumps on that bandwagon. And yeah, like you experienced, everybody's in awe oh, over the guru. And you kind of feed off of the way everybody else is, is interacting with that. That's scary. It is very scary. I want to show you guys how this, this ends up because I think it's very interesting how they come to this conclusion about the Star Wars series. But it's like, they, they I mean, it's a pretty harsh con conclusion, but it's like, but we're still going to watch it. <laughs>
do you feel, for me, these elements of the force have always been potentially navigable mm-hmm. for some families. Do you would you agree with that? Is that yeah. still navigable here? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. And this is more my personal opinion than plugged in. I think all movies present a worldview that you have to decide as a family, are we willing to wade into this or not? Now, this one's a little bit skewed because I saw Star Wars when I was seven. Right, right. And me my too. parents weren't really worried about whether the worldview was appropriate to me as a seven year old. So I've grown up with Star Wars, and that probably causes me perhaps to minimize it a little bit personally. Mm-hmm. You know, if Star Wars came out now, would I have a different perspective on the worldview than I did because I grew up with it? Right. Probably. Right. Um, you know, I think this is a great sort of case study in worldview because it's so clearly a belief system that's different than Christianity. Okay. So they're clearly admitting that these movies are absolutely different than Christianity. Mm-hmm. So my question then, why would you watch it? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And th- there's, a, there's a lot of stuff like that. There's an interesting text in Second Thessalonians says this. It says, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power mm-hmm. and signs mm-hmm. and lying wonders. Okay, so those are very powerful elements and with unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Mm. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. In other words, there's a lie coming, right? A very powerful lie. It's coming to everybody. And if you don't love the truth, God is going to let you go down your own path to believe that lie, right? You're, you're going to wind up believing. And, and you know, we hear this all the time. It's, it's not going to affect me. What they really say by that is, nothing will change my thinking. But everything you watch, everything you read is designed to change your thinking, right? Art is meant to affect the user. That's the purpose of art. And I look at something like Star Wars and I'm like, okay, it is, if George Lucas isn't Christian and he talks about all these new age ideas and he doesn't, I mean, I've seen interviews where he's just like, he doesn't even know what's out there. He believes there's something, but he doesn't know what it is. And he doesn't know what to call it. Then don't call it Christian, right? Don't try to make it Christian. Don't try to pull all these Christian themes out of there because it's not. Mm-hmm. It wasn't designed that way. That's right. Like so he you said, can't make it something that it's not. That's right. Like he said, it's, it's, ta- it's Taoism, it's, it's mm-hmm. pantheism, it's all these other things. So you can't just be like, oh, well, it's got a good and an evil guy. Oh, therefore, it's like Christ and Satan, right? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's pushing more towards that religion. God is in everything and the force and all that kind of stuff than it is. You cannot model that after Christ. It's super important to understand what the people believe that are putting stuff out. So I'm going to go back to some things that you brought out in the very beginning. <clears throat> there is a quote from the book, The Secret Doctrine, mm. which was written by Blavatsky. Mm-hmm. And this comes from page 79. She says, The devil is now called darkness by the church, whereas in the Bible he is called the Son of God, the bright star or the early morning, or yeah, the bright star of the early morning, Lucifer. There is a whole philosophy of dogmatic craft in the reason why the first archangel who sprang from the depths of chaos was called Lux, the luminous sun of the morning, or Manvantric dawn. He was transformed by the church into Lucifer or Satan. Now, here's the kicker. Listen to her reasoning. Because he is higher and older than Jehovah and had to be sacrificed to the new dogma. Wow. So when you start talking about these authors and ascended masters, and they're going to teach you these things, and it's like, well, where is all this coming from? You have to understand, they may throw out terms, and they sound like the same terms, and they sound like they mean the same things. Hmm. But let's go back to the root definition and root cause. What are they really talking about? Mm-hmm. And when you, when you see here, now if she's going to refer to the Christ in any way, I know what she's talking about. Mm. She's not talking about God. Mm-hmm. Right, right. She's talking about another master. Right. And that's where, you know, all those hip-hop stars, all those actors, you know, when they reference God, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, which God are you mm-hmm. actually right, you referencing? referencing? You know, the, 
going back to the Theosophical Society, it's very interesting that the, the original trust was called the Lucifer Trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they changed it to the Lucius Trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so their, their core, and what that, which is recognizing what you just said just a moment ago, her focal point is recognizing Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the Lucius Trust is now all about, which is, where is it now? It's right there at the United Nations. That's mm -hmm. scary. I heard a really interesting story um, this past weekend. Um, somebody was describing, um, I think it was uh, this, this special uh, operation from our government that would teach people how to spot counterfeits. And they did all this training, and um, they were trying to teach this, this, this group that was basically um, intaking large amounts of cash. And the ladies that would take in all the cash, um, they, they basically came to the training and they said, we don't really need that. And so the, the FBI was like, well, why, why, why not? Like, we're, we're, we need to train you how to do it. And they said, we handle so much of the genuine. You can put a fake in our hands and we will spot it in a second because we are so familiar with the genuine. And I, that just kind of stuck with me. And I was just like, wow, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, the more that you focus on all these other stories and all these other things going on and, and as fantastical as they may sound, it's just like you're, you're not focusing on the genuine and when you really fall in love with the genuine and then you hear these fantastical things and you go, hey, that doesn't really line up. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't even want that in your head. And that's the, that's the thing that I question with like, you know, even, even these guys, I don't know where they are spiritually, but I found it very interesting that they were like, look, man, these Star Wars movies, they have nothing to do with Christianity, exactly. but I'm going to go watch them. Yeah. yeah. You have this desire to be satisfied on some kind of level that you don't realize that you've been actually programmed to do that. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, any last little minute thoughts you guys want to throw out there? I, think we're oh, I have a question. Okay. While being in the new age, um, is there one truth that you wish you had known that would have gotten you out of it quicker? Well, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, if I'd understood the sin aspect of it and what it really meant to be a Christian, that I can't accomplish I can't overcome those things of my own accord, that the submission to Christ was a requirement. You know, I, went, I was in the Lutheran church, and my mom would say that I was re absolutely fascinated by what the pastor would have to say. But when I heard him talk about certain things, my, I, my whole aspect would deflate in regards to truth that I'd read in the Bible. And taking the Bible literally as it reads, which is what we're encouraged to do, take the Bible just as it reads, really would have made a difference in my life. Hmm. And I think that's really what it comes down to. I think that people don't realize that the Bible, as it is written, is really designed to teach us about a relationship with not only God, but with one another. Mm -hmm. And it shows us what happens if we don't follow that way. Hmm. You know, the children of Israel were, were, went in this direction of, of really Satan's leading, okay, when it comes down to it instead of following God's leading, which would have given them peace and happiness. And that's really what the issue was for me. Uh, if I had actually understood this better when I was growing up. Because when I, in the Lutheran Church, I, I recognize the commandments of God, and I can remember our pastor talking about hellfire, and I'm going, oh. You know, and I, because I recognized that that wasn't really true what the Bible was teaching. Mm -hmm. And this is just as a child, mm -hmm. okay? Because you recognize certain things that are not true, mm -hmm. because the Bible doesn't teach that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you, from my perspective, if I had heard something that was about real, true Christianity, that I can understand the Word of God and that the Holy Spirit would be my teacher, hmm. because that's what the Bible teaches me, mm -hmm. instead of man, then all of a sudden, and that's what all these things are looking for. You're looking for an ascended master to teach you, right? Mm -hmm. You're looking for someone to teach you. Well, there is one. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Good point. There is one, and his name is the Holy Spirit. He's come here to teach us about Christ. Mm -hmm. And will guide us into all Exa truth. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good point. Wow. <laughs> what a great note. I don't even know if there's anything else that we should say <laughs> after this. I hope you guys were blessed. Um, you know, kind of getting to know Randy and Julia here with the New Age and mm -hmm. your, your journey out of that and into Christianity. What a beautiful testimony. I want to encourage you um, listeners out there, especially if you have young kids, Man, I have looked through tons of testimonies in YouTube, and there is time and time again 
kids around the ages of 12, 13, and 14 years old that started getting into the whole New Age movement simply by watching little um, 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 particular movies that had those elements in them or listening to uh, some people on YouTube. So, you know, it's not necessarily just a movie. Be careful what your children are, are watching. Even on YouTube, things can be um, somewhat unsafe. And so, you know, we wanted to give you a little context of this because coming up here in this holiday season, there are some major movies coming out and a lot of them have a lot of new age philosophy in it. So do your research, keep checking out our LEDs and hopefully you watch a couple of them. Watch a few of the other ones. We've got one on Star Wars and, uh, and that'll give you a whole context of what we're talking about. But hit that notification bell. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a notification when there was new videos that drop. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Those of you that have, thank you for watching. Thank you all for supporting us. We hope you have a blessed weekend. God bless.